deal with you. It's kind of just between you and me, okay? Just, just you and me. Let's leave the girls out of it. Just you and me, okay? All right. I'm listening. No, you got, you got to come near the door, because I don't want the girls to hear this. Go ahead. Move back. Move back. Go ahead. What's the deal? This is the deal, man. said he would call us as soon as he finds Bobby's mother's house. That doesn't mean he's going to find them. They might have left there by I now. I don't think the police are going to have any trouble tracking them down. Remember, Gavin is injured. He's not going to be up to doing much traveling. Yes, you're being sensible. And you're right. The show must go on, and there's nobody else to do the 11 o'clock news. Mrs. Cavanaugh, you're sure you don't want me to come down to the studio with you? Oh, no, Nora. This is just not the right time to introduce you to the place or vice versa, and I'll be so busy putting the show together for tonight. Ain't going to be any show to put together unless you get going. Now, you're sure there's nothing I can do for you here? Well, just look after my husband. Make sure he eats something. Oh, uh, come on. Would you stop that? That is not a secretarial duty. I'm sure Nora wants to go home. She's put in enough overtime hours for her first day on the job. Well, oh, it's strictly voluntary, Doctor. I live in one small room, and there's no one waiting for me there. In fact, I don't even have a television set to watch your wife on a new show tonight. No, you don't even have a television set. I'll tell you what you've got to do. You've got to stay here tonight till 11. You watch your new boss on the tube, and I'll drive you home. Oh, uh, no, that's all right. I have my own car. It's in the garage downstairs. Now, you, I really would like to make dinner for him. Oh, that would be wonderful. If you don't, he'll just nibble everything right out of the refrigerator. Now, look, I'll be back right after the news, and you call me if you hear anything. I promise. All right, goodbye. 
I'll see what I can do in the kitchen. This is nothing elaborate, all right? Very, very simple tastes I have. I don't need too much. I would simply have to trust you. Well, can you really do that? No. But I have read all the fine print, and it seems fairly ordinary to me. There is one clause I would like to have, if I could. Oh, and what's that? I would like to add something that would prevent your wife from attending rehearsals. I see. But I doubt that would you like that very much. No, well, you're not going to have to worry about Raven. Besides, we're not in rehearsals anymore. We begin performances tomorrow night. You seem to be very happy about it. Well, I've waited a long time for this moment. I can't remember wanting anything quite as badly as this. And Raven, is she excited too? To be seated by the side of the great impresario, watching his moment of triumph. Well, no, this will be your moment, Martine. Is Mrs. Saxon well enough to attend the opening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she'll be sitting in the box with us, applauding you on. Well, I shall leave you, now that I have taken care of all the formalities. Sky, I was very surprised to see you opening the door. Oh, yeah, well, our maid is off uh, for a week. Her mother is ill. Raven and I are looking after ourselves for a while. Aren't you worried, even a little bit? Oh, you mean because of the recent burglary? Well, no, actually, uh, I've learned my lesson. The next burglar is going to find himself in for a shocking surprise. Oh, have you electrified the fence or something? No, but I have added a very fancy-type burglar alarm, the kind that goes directly to the local police station. Well, that's very good, Sky. Shall we? You know, that uh, attempted burglary in Paris didn't work. The attempted burglary here in Monticello didn't work, so actually, I've got nothing to worry about. I'm so glad we took those precautions. I'll see you at the theater. Oh, uh, Laura, thank you, thank you. I trust you're not going to make this a habit. Well, you're not going to be able to make it a habit. Mrs. Goodman is very jealous of her prerogatives around here. Has she been with you a long time? Yeah, she's been about a couple of years, but she's never lived with us before. That'll be quite a difference. Yes, of course. She's got her own home, you know. And she didn't want to take this job at first, so we had to use underhanded tactics to convince her. What were they? Well, my wife took little Adam to see her, and he looked up at her and said, Aren't you coming to the penthouse with us, Mrs. Goodman? And she, she melted and she said yes. <laughs> you obviously think a lot of the lady. Oh, she's terrific. She's been a wonderful help to us, yeah. I hope I'm as helpful to Mrs. Cavanaugh. I realize she's a very busy person. Well, she's going to need the help, you know. She's never run a news department before. Uh, all this new responsibilities come at such a difficult time, all these personal problems here. Yes. I read the last article on Gavin. I mean, to cut up that poor man's body. Oh, I'm afraid it's legally required in all cases of unnatural death. Mm -hmm. And the cause of death, there's no doubt about that. No, not at all. I see. And of course, since you did the autopsy, your opinion is accepted, isn't it? Well, yeah, I assume so. I get that. I'll clear this away. Hello. Miles, hysteric. Listen, I found a house. It's out in the old brewery section of town. We got a tip in the tax department. The place was repossessed and closed down years ago for lack of payment. Tell her, what about Jody? She was here, as was Gannon. You mean they're not there anymore? No, they're gone, but they left somebody behind.
to tell him and explain what had happened. But you saw the headline. I've been indicted. There's no more time left. It's all over now, Jody. Don't you see? That newspaper article just confirmed what I heard the police say. The gun that was shot from the distance. No one believes that we were wrestling when the gun went off. They've already got me in jail. They don't even need a trial to convince me. Crazy! Chance to tell your side of the story. I did tell my story. To you and Nicole. What am I gonna do now? Change it? Saying I didn't wrestle for the gun? That I accidentally shot Gunther from ten feet away? Everybody believes that. Even Miles. Dude, don't. Miles, he wouldn't say something if he didn't think it was true. He performed the autopsy, Jody. It is his medical opinion. It is his medical opinion against mine. A fat chance I'm gonna have in the courtroom, huh? You know, Gavin, um, I really wish that I could understand it. I think you do understand it. I think you believe it, too. Believe what? person in my life who cares about me. If you don't believe me, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I can understand that you don't want to believe that Miles could be wrong. I don't blame you for that. I've just got to be free right now to prove that I'm not lying. Oh, my legs so stiff. Okay. This is a rooming house, right? So... Let's see if we can get a room. Are you crazy? We can't stay here. Well, we can't go anywhere else, can we? It's, it's worth a try. Yeah, yeah, I don't see any other alternatives. Okay, you, uh, you sit here quietly and, um, I'll see what I can arrange. Try it here. You're all right, Harry. It's okay. It's all over with. It's, uh, you all right? Bobby? What happened? Exactly what happened. Sharky was holding all of us here. He was afraid we were going to tell the police where he was. It was awful. He, he was so crazy. and We didn't know what else could do. Gavin managed to lock him out of the room and... Sharky fired that old gun through the door. Yeah, that old gun is right. Barrel was so rusty it blew up in his face. He'll be all right, but he'll be in the infirmary for a while. I can't believe this is happening. Is that when Jody and Gavin left and you called for help? All right, now, Bobby, I want you to be straight with me on this. Look at me. Where are they? Where did they go? I don't know. Of course you know. The three of you are in this together. Now, come on. You've gone this far. Come through for me. Where are they? what you've gotten yourself into. It's called aiding and abetting a fugitive. If you really want to be a smell, you should just get the hell out of here as soon as possible. 
You know, you didn't mind Bobby giving aid to a fugitive. Look, I told Bobby the same thing I told you. You ought to just go home and let me figure it all out by myself. All I need is time to figure it out. Kevin, I love you. And that has to mean something. And that doesn't mean betraying one another in trouble. It means that whatever us together. And we agreed upon that a long time ago, you remember? Oh, sure. I remember. Kevin. Oh, this I have something to tell you. When um I, w I was going to talk to the landlady, I saw this payphone and um I called the police. You what? Well, I didn't talk to them, so you don't have to worry about it. How could you call the police? Calling the police is not the answer right now, Jody. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Um, the important thing is that you didn't talk to them. But there's one call that you should make, and that's to Miles and Nicole. They don't know where you are. That's do they? right. I better do that now. Here, you, you finish doing the right, Jody. Don't worry. I'm only going to tell them that I'm all right. together just like this nice cozy team but then it takes two partners to make a team doesn't it I used to have what you've got but not anymore somebody broke off the other half and now there's just me alone and you know something I don't like it I don't like it at all Yes? Hello? Uh, is this the Kavanaugh residence? Yes, it is. Oh, well, but to whom am I speaking? I'm Nora Fulton, uh, Mrs. Kavanaugh's secretary. Oh, is uh, Nicole there? No, I'm sorry, she isn't at the moment. May I tell her who's calling? Uh, yes, this is her sister, Jody. Nora, who is that? It's Mrs. Kavanaugh's sister. Jody? Who the hell are you? We're half crazy with worry, you know. Are, are you all right? What's happening? Miles, one thing at a time. I called to tell you that I'm okay and there's no need for you to worry. No need for us to worry. Damn it, we got every right in the world to worry. Now, are you with Gavin? Yes, I am, and he needs me. What's going on, Jody? Uh, Burton said you gotta tell me where you are. No, I can't. I can't do that. Not at the moment. Jody, we know Gavin's hurt. It is no longer your responsibility. You gotta persuade him to get himself up. Miles, I'm afraid that I'm gonna have to persuade myself first. Sorry, Jody. Can't drag this thing out. You're both in big trouble now. You have to let us help you. Uh, why do you kids want to take a look at that room? Goodbye, Miles. We'll talk later. Uh, yeah, that'll be great. We'd love to look at the room right now. Uh, listen, you wait here and I'll go get my husband. Okay, he's very tired. We've had a very long trip, and uh, I'll be I'll be right back. No, I want to Skype with me to Skype to sign my contract. Yes. Well, I managed to find out everything about the security of the place. You can't do it. Not tomorrow, not any other day. That is nonsense, my love. Tomorrow is the perfect time. Tomorrow night is the opening of the Whitney Dance Company. The entire Whitney Zoo will be at that opening. Raven, beautiful dowager queen, Mrs. Saxon, and the weasel himself, Skyler Whitney. What did you find out about the maid? What's her name? Chrissy. Yes. Well, I'm sorry to say that, but she won't be there. She has taken the week off to visit a mother who is not well. God bless her sweet soul. You see, not a creature will stir in that house except one. You know, I might even feel lonely there. Oh, no. You will have plenty of company when the alarm goes off. Yes. In case that you don't know, they just installed a new alarm system after the last robbery. You dealt with those before? You can't deal with this one. It's directly connected with the police station. In fact, I think I saw an emblem on the door. What emblem? Martine, what emblem? I think it's Fillmore or something. Fillmore? We are in. Let me fill you in on some trivia about the Fillmore system, my love. 
it does not go directly to the police department. It goes to the Fillmore security office. They, in turn, call the Whitney House to see if it's an official alarm, if it's a false alarm. Now, the person at the Whitney House gives them the security number. If they give them the false number, Fillmore will call the police department. Now, all we need is Whitney's coded number. And do you think you're going to get it? Read his mind? Open your eyes. It's impossible to commit this robbery. Listen, my love, I'm telling you for the last time, I am the one committed to this adventure, and nothing in the world is going to stop me from doing it. Now, let's enjoy our meal. I'm ravenous. Yes, of course. The condemned always eat a hearty meal.